brought to you by the Fields Auto Group. Jaguar senior writer John Osher, NFL network analyst and former Jaguar Bucky Brooks, and senior reporter J.P. Shatterick bring you the latest on your Jacksonville Jaguars. Huddle Up starts right now. And welcome in. It is Wednesday. It's Huddle Up with Bucky Brooks heading into week number 14. J.P. Shatterick, John Osher from the Hyundai Studios at the Miller Electric Center in Jacksonville. Bucky Brooks in L.A. A busy show coming up. It's week 14, of course. The Jaguars and the Cleveland Browns at Cleveland Browns Stadium this Sunday at 1 o'clock. The Browns in playoff contention at 7-5. and five. They would be in if it ended today as a wild card team. They've got some changes at quarterback again, and their defense is playing well. We'll get to that coming up. Plenty of injury updates. Head coach Doug Peterson speaking today, as did quarterback Trevor Lawrence. And, of course, the AFC playoff chase is heating up. The Jaguars currently the number four seed in the AFC. And Huddle Up with Bucky Brooks is brought to you by Fields Auto Group Jacksonville. Step up to luxury fieldsauto.com. And, uh, John, let's, let's start right into it today, the big – News of the day was the quarterback, of course, Trevor Lawrence, speaking with the media and the Jags trying to rebound from that loss to the Bengals on Monday Night Football and the major injuries. The right high ankle sprain for Trevor Lawrence. He walked into the press conference today without a boot on, and he answered the question about what it would take to play. It's still early in the week. Um, obviously, New Orleans, I didn't know until right before the game, but and that was a, this is a short week, but that was a really short week. So we'll have a couple more days than we did then, which is which is nice. But still lost a day playing on Monday night. So I guess that's just the way it's been going this year with some of that stuff. But um, you know, I'm I'm t- really just taking it one day at a time. I'm trying to do do as much as I can each day without you know aggravating it or, or making anything worse. But trying to progress towards you know hopefully playing. Like that's the that's the goal every week and and every day is to try to get as healthy as possible and. The past what forty eight hours have been some big steps, and I'm I'm really happy with with how it's it's healing up. So we'll see. You know, I obviously can't give any answers right now, and uh, I'm just gonna take my time and and do everything right. And with with the medical people downstairs and the trainers and in the weight room. Um, so just you know, check every box that I can to try to be able to play on Sunday. That's the quarterback, and uh, this would be his 47th consecutive start to start his career if he were to go this week. Long way from 297 and Brett Favre, John, but what do you read from the tea leaves there? He walked. He <laughs> talked. Um, he didn't have a boot. He was significantly not limping on the way in. I, I'm not going to say that he wasn't making sure he didn't limp, if you follow me. I think there was some appearance uh, wanting there. Look, um, when he went down on Monday, I didn't think in any way in the world he would play. Uh, he he has played through injuries uh, the next week twice. This is a significantly different thing, the high ankle sprain. Conventional wisdom is it's, it, it is a three- to four- uh, to six-week injury. Uh, Mahomes also played on a high sprain last year in the playoffs. Uh Anything could happen. This kid's been Superman before. I would still guess that he doesn't, but I feel a little more after today like there's a decent chance he will. He, he talked, which is significant in this league. You know, when the starting quarterback talks, means there's a chance he plays. So, uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what do you? But read, we'll see. What do you read from it, Bucky? A couple of things that uh, came out from that, that that really stood out to me. One, he walked in without a boot. That's significant. Two, he talked about – uh, playing and what we know from Trevor, the situation appeared dire before the New Orleans Saints game, and he showed up and played. Didn't practice much, played and played really well. Uh, this is a guy I give him credit. The toughness uh, that you want to see from your franchise quarterback, he exhibits the courage to kind of put himself out there and do it. I applaud him. The key will be if you're Doug Peterson, do you want to expose him to the Browns' defensive front, where he could possibly tweak it again, and then not be available down the stretch? Or do you want to give him a full week to rest and recover and target the Baltimore Ravens, that Sunday night game, as an opportunity for him to come back? You know, it's trying to weigh the pros and cons of what could be if he plays this week versus letting him get right and be all the way back when he plays against the Baltimore Ravens. Yeah, I don't – yes, first of all, but he's exactly right. I I don't know if realistically off a high sprain – 
you're going to be right in two weeks, 100%. I mean, you think about it, Mahomes still in the Super Bowl was showing some, uh, you know, wasn't really the same guy yet, I don't think. Uh, so you probably are limited for a little while. Um, my guess is if they feel like he can protect himself and, and play it all, uh, I think he'll play. I, I, I'd still be surprised, but um, I'm just surprised. I guess I'm surprised that I feel this confident, even though I'm not super, super confident. Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, just because we all saw the scene on Monday night when he's mm -hmm. twisted up like a pretzel in the field and he's throwing his helmet and he can't walk down the hallway. And at that moment, I'm thinking he's out next week and maybe longer than that because yeah. he really just didn't know just from the look of it. But to have this even a possibility this week is pretty remarkable for the quarterback. Let's hear the head coach's perspective on it today. Doug Peterson on what goes into the decision to make a change or not. Biggest thing is, is as you mentioned, player health. That's the biggest thing. Um, you know, our job as, as a medical staff, head coach, we're not going to put players on the field that can, that aren't, a hundred percent that aren't healthy that that uh, could maybe even further risk more damage you know to the area that's that's injured um and it's our jobs to to protect those players and make sure you know it's it's not at the cost of of winning a football game obviously and um yes we are in this this last sort of month of the of the year where we're making making our run um but we also know too that if, for instance, if, if Trevor can't play in this game, there's there's going to come a time at some point where he is, and you know we've got to we've all got to come together to, to kind of weather this storm a little bit, um, so that when you know uh, if there's a time when he does return, so to speak, that that you know we make we make that push with him, and and, and we've kind of gone through this period of. Uh, you know, playing playing some backups. So there you have it. Um, Bucky, does that clear anything up for you or no? Or make it even muddier? <laughs> well, no, I, I think it may clear up a couple of different things. Uh, one, without really knowing how the Jaguars sit in the division in terms of owning the tiebreakers and those things, if you are going to sit them, this is the perfect opportunity to sit them. Uh, in my mind, I think you have to win at least four out of the next five games to be in a pretty good spot. 12 and five will probably not only get you into the playoffs, but it, it should be enough to win the division. So if you have to quote unquote, give away a game, the Cleveland game is the one. What you don't want to happen is for him to play, he plays for maybe a half, but then you miss him for the Baltimore game and two other games after that, when Doug is talking about making the push. I think it's important when you talked about making the push with 16. To me, I think Doug is going to be really conservative with this one, knowing that I would rather have him for the next four and give up this one as opposed to play him and then lose him for a significant time down the stretch. Pretty sure three and two gets you there as long as you beat the Titans at the end of the season. Um, I could be wrong on that. I, I researched today a little bit. I, I to me, it feels like uh, these next couple are are really, really big um, because you don't want to let Houston get ahead of you. And uh, so that's why leads are never safe in the NFL. We learned that last year. And what can feel like a monstrous lead uh, can feel very small very quickly. And that's kind of what happened in five minutes the other night. Um, it, it's a tough spot. I, I just... At this stage of the season, I do feel like it, if he can play, uh, I think it's sort of like New Orleans felt a little bit. There's only 17 of these things. And if he can play, uh, then I think he plays. And if he can't, he can't. And that's kind of a silly way to put it because there's more nuance than that. But if you can play, you play in this league. And, but if there's, a, if there's a risk of further injury, um, then I think that takes it all off the table. Then he says, I think oh, yeah. I mean, it's pretty black and white. If they believe there's a significant risk that he hurts this thing more, then I don't think there's a chance he plays. Okay, I'll, I'll say this. 
I think a lot of it is not only his health, but it's going with the offensive coaches and trying to figure out, can we build a game plan that really limits his mobility and what we expose him to? Can we build a game plan that maybe features a lot of bubble screens and quicks? Um, we, we don't have the boot movement game, but how can we build out a winning game plan that keeps him comfortable in the pocket and doesn't expose him to hits? Now, you can never guarantee it, but we do know if you go quick game, if you go screens, if you do some some other things where the ball is designed to get out quick, he can stay upright. Do you feel confident in your ability to be able to do that against this team? Because the difference, and we'll talk about Cleveland later, Cleveland plays a lot of man-to-man. They play a lot of tight man-to-man um, where they're not going to give free release to the receivers outside. That makes it a little more difficult to say, hey, we're just going to put him in the shotgun and let him dink and dunk and get the ball out quickly. And another thing to consider as well, you might have a couple other starters out. I mean, Walker Little's on the list this week with a hamstring, left tackle, and then, of course, Christian Kirk's done. So Parker Washington will be in there. He stepped in last week and made some catches, but notably on the play where Trevor was hurt, wrong route, miscommunication. Um, so that's something to consider as well, Bucky, with uh, the injuries around him and the personnel that's up. Uh, around the quarterback this week. Plenty to get to. We're back in a moment. We'll take a look at those Cleveland Browns that are 7-5. and five. And bootleggers, get ready. Luke Combs is bringing two nights of the Growing Up and Getting Old Tour to the bank, May 3rd and 4th. Different special guests each night. Tickets on sale now at everbankstadium.com. And this is Huddle Up with Bucky Brooks. Hello, I'm Dan Fields, and we have some great news. Fields has the vehicle you want in stock, priced right, and ready for delivery. Fields Auto Group is Jacksonville's luxury automotive destination for Cadillac, Jaguar, Land Rover, Lexus, Mercedes-Benz, and Porsche. Inventory is back and available for immediate delivery. And every Fields customer can take advantage of our Fields Amenities Program with complimentary loaners, car washes, and our cafes. You deserve the best. Stop by today or go to FieldsAuto.com. Calling all Jags fans. Is your little one ready to become a junior Jaguar? Now through January 2nd, MyGate Rewards loyalty members who buy two 20-ounce Coca-Cola participating products will be entered to win one of 10 behind-the-scenes experiences at Everbank Stadium for your child. Plus, you'll earn a 10-cent rollback at the pump, a win every time. Fuel your child's dreams, your car, and your passion for the Jags with Gate, proud partner of the Jacksonville Jaguars. The kick is up. It's good! Score winning sub deals this Jaguars regular season at Firehouse Subs. Get two medium subs for just $10 after any game with the Jaguars kick a field goal of 40 yards or more. It's a bold deal for the bold city. Sign up at firehousesubs.com slash field goals for Firehouse for offer details and to automatically receive this offer when you use your Firehouse Subs rewards account. Redeemable only at participating Jacksonville and Orlando area restaurants. Only available on the Firehouse Subs app and online ordering. You know, obviously, yeah, you were you were in a, a, a bit of a rhythm. Things were kind of clicking a little bit, and and um, you know, um, you, you'd still try to do things that are going to try to keep that same rhythm. You know, but now, again, if you're if you you know, we're talking about the quarterback position, you, you got to play to each one's strengths too. You know, if, if it is CJ, you know, he can't be Trevor, and, and Trevor's not obviously going to be CJ. Things like that. Um, and so you, you try to tailor things according to their strengths, right? And, and uh, the things that they do well. And a lot of input from the player, obviously, uh, in, this, you know, in, in this situation, the quarterback, and, and making sure that he's comfortable with the game plan and, and uh, even the guys around him, um, you know, they have to do their part too, right? They, they've got to be where they need to be in a, in a particular route. Uh, protection has to hold up all those things. Uh, to, to make sure it continues to, you know, move forward. And, you know, um, went through this in 17, and, you know, we didn't miss too much. I mean, it was a, it was different. It was a different look, but we didn't miss a beat, right? And, and we continued to, to improve as a team. 
course, head coach Doug Peterson earlier today. The full press conference available at Jaguars.com or the Jaguars YouTube channel. He's referencing the 2017 Philadelphia Eagles. Carson Wentz went down, of course, and a gentleman named Nick Foles came in to the fold and led them to a Super Bowl victory. And it's huddle up with Bucky Brooks, J.P. Shadrick, John Ozier in Jacksonville. Bucky Brooks in Los Angeles and... Hey, guys, we're in the final stretch of the regular season here. Only two home games remaining, so be there as the Jags go head-to-head with the Ravens Sunday, December 17th on Sunday Night Football. Grab your teal and help the Jags teal out the stands and get your tickets at jaguars.com slash tickets or 904-633-2000. Before that game in Week 15, there's business to attend to this week in Cleveland on the shores of Lake Erie at Cleveland Browns Stadium a 7-5 and five Browns team that uh, is led by a really highly ranked defense, number one in the league in total defense, very good against the pass. Um, third down, they're number one in the league. They've got, um, they've got guys all over the place, Bucky. What, what stands out the most against this Browns defense? Why are they ranking so highly? A combination of talent and the scheme. Uh, but let's talk about the scheme first. The scheme is a wide nine defense, meaning that they're going to position their defensive ends uh, significantly outside the outside sh- shoulders of the offensive tackles. That puts a lot of pressure on the tackles, particularly on passing downs, to be able to kick, slide, get out to slow those guys down. Then when you combine it with the personnel that they have in those marquee spots, Miles Garrett is a dominant pass rusher, arguably one of the best pass rushers, if not the best pass rusher in the league. You're now giving him an opportunity to have angles and leverage on your pass protectors. Then on the other side, Darius Smith is also a veteran player who does a really good job of creating sack production and disruptive plays. And so you have those two guys on the outside, and then in the back end, they have like very talented cornerbacks that specialize and really get in your nose making you uncomfortable, not giving up easy access and a lot of space. And so they're forcing the quarterback to make tight windows throws while under duress. And it has worked for them. It's worked real well for them. They go after it. They create turnovers. This is a really good defensive front. I would say the Achilles heel for them can be a running game. The issue that we've had, we haven't been able to run the ball effectively enough to make them have to get out of some of the things that they want to do when it comes to rushing the pass. Yeah, and, and that's what you wonder. If if C.J. is the quarterback, no offense to C.J., but do the Browns respect the pass enough for you to sort of run the way the Jaguars have run at times, which is in in lighter formations and, and being able to sort of stick with it even when the other team – stopped it a little bit, but then the other team's playing the pass, so you sort of get some breaks there. I, I um, This matchup, for a number of reasons, concerns you. Uh, Lawrence being out, uh, the Jaguars this season have not been able to run when they need or want to run necessarily well enough. Four minutes, short yardage. Uh, so it, it's probably stretching reason a little bit to think that they're with quarterback mobility or a backup being an issue. Are they going to be able to just turn around and hand the ball off? Mm-hmm. That's not really what this offense does, even when it's going right. It's not a turn around and hand the ball to the running back and, and a grinded out offense, especially on a muddy day, a cold day. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm not, it, it, again, this is not saying that they cannot go in this game, but that matchup, Bucky, uh, is not on paper very favorable. No, it's not, it's not, it's not very favorable. And, you know, the running game or the lack thereof has been a huge issue because it just prevents you from being able to control the game. Uh, I think there's some frustration. Doug has kind of let that frustration out when it comes to their inability to be able to dominate short yardage, goal line situations. Too many times the Jaguars have come up short on third and one, fourth and one, opportunities to either score touchdowns or to extend drives that would allow you to control the clock. I don't know. I mean, we've seen this offensive line adopt a physical tough guy mentality at times, but it's been inconsistent. Um, with a backup quarterback, everything has to be heightened. You have to pull together. Uh, I would say this week, the offensive line has to play their best game for them to be able to play. And I'm saying that with the intention of C.J. Beathard being the quarterback, the offensive line has to play well for them to have any chance with a backup. And you know what's funny about what I just said, J.P.? Hmm. In this league, 
they probably come out and run for 140 yards. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. Because I mean, it, what it, happened know, with the Bengals on Monday night? Hey. You do see it happen. Yeah, and and uh, continuity, focus, knowing that you've got to do it, knowing that – I don't say the season's on the line, but this this is really big. I mean, it, and I did the math a little bit, and I should have done it before the show. If the Jaguars go 4-1 and one and beat the Titans, they win the division, period. The Texans can't mm-hmm. catch them in that scenario. But 4-1, and one, uh, you, you got to go at least that if – if the Texans go unbeaten with Baltimore coming up the next week, uh, this game to me, I've been saying all day on, on uh, different conversations. This game to me is, is a huge test for the maturity and, and the resilience of this Jaguars team. And I've been praising them all year in that regard. I think they are a mature, resilient team under Doug. They started doing it last year. They've done it a lot this year. The way you felt walking out of that stadium the other night, the gut punch of losing Christian Kirk, of having Trevor Hurt, of having to go to Cleveland, a team that's that's equally desperate. You go win this game, color me impressed, Bucky. I I think this is a a really big test. I think it's passable because I believe in the maturity of this team, but it's a mm-hmm. test. Yeah, it's a test. But you know what? I I think sometimes we have to recognize what the team is, and I think this is a team that is always at its best when his backs are against the wall. Yeah, fair. For whatever reason, this team hasn't handled prosperity well. When things have kind of been lined up for them to take advantage of it, they haven't been able to do it. But when they've been doubted, when they've been counted out, when things look dire, they've been able to respond and, and really play their best ball. So my expectation is that the feeling that everyone had, oh, woe is me, the season is over, Trevor Lawrence is not coming back, in a weird way, I think the team gets galvanized. I expect them to go to Cleveland and play well. I don't have any necessarily evidence that they're going to play well with C.J. Beathard or a hobbling Trevor Lawrence. This team has just done it in those instances. Um, I I think they just kind of feed off of being backed into a corner and trying to have to figure it, fight their way out. You know why it's his show, JP? Why is that? Because that was a great point. Yeah. And uh, (laughs) the Bucky Brooks show. Yeah. Uh, that's worth my – and I I couldn't agree more. That That's what you depend on. That's what it's been for a year and a half now. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if you believe this team's strong, believe it's good, believe in that, uh, I, I think that's a lot. I, it's a really good point going into this game. I will say this, though. The defense better play much better yeah. than they did on Monday night for any of that to, to matter, and they'll have to do it against the Browns team. Speaking of backup quarterbacks, they've run a few out there this year. Dorian Thompson Robinson is back in line. It sounds like to to be back in a starting role, most likely. Flacco started last week. They've had four different players play quarterback this year. Deshaun Watson six times, DTR three times, PJ Walker a couple. Flacco last week, and uh, you know um, they got they they've got some guys that are nicked up on offense, Bucky. But what stands out the most about this Browns offense is a Jags defense. They got to get off the mat from Monday night. Yeah, they got to get off the mat. And here's what stands out to me about the Browns' offense. None of the guys' pitches really matter in terms of what the Browns want to do. This is a team that is built at the line of scrimmage. Offensive line, uh, one of the better offensive lines in football. They want to run the football. If they're able to run the football, it unlocks everything that they want to do in the passing game. And so very similar to the way the Cincinnati Bengals attacked the Jaguars on Monday, you'll see uh, an approach utilized by Kevin Stefanski that mirrors that. They want to run the football early. They want to put themselves in, uh, I would say, favorable uh, downs on third down, third and four or less. So then that way they can allow the running game and the passing game to come into the equation. And so you're not able to get a beat on them. When they're able to play from in front, meaning not only playing from in front of the score, but playing from in front on the change, second and second and medium, uh, third and short, that's how they want to play. So it's on the Jaguars defense. Um, they got to line up. They got to stop the running game. They got to do a better job in coverage. But this is more where the defense has to wear the hat. We've said it all year. The defense has kind of been underrated. Well, now the expectation is when your quarterback is hurt, the defense has to step up and do more. This defense has to get back to playing the kind of bully ball they were playing. Yeah, was it just being out physical on Monday night on first downs in the running game? Why did they give up 156 and – you know, what well, is that is that a sign of things to come or is that a one off Monday? Well, we're gonna see if it's a one off because what happens when you put bad tape out there, uh, the teams that play after that game, 
they're going to make sure that you've solved those problems. So this will be the toughest thing because now that you put that bad take up against the Cincinnati Bengals where you couldn't stop the running game with Chase Brown and Joe Mixon, you can get a heavy dose of the running game from the Browns. You can get that anyway, but now they have confidence that they might be able to control the game with the run. So you're going to have to be on your P's and Q's. The issues that came up against Cincinnati that are problematic, lack of gap control, meaning you have defenders assigned to every gap. There are eight gaps on the line. Someone has to be in all of those gaps. Didn't have consistency there. Lack of consistent tackling. They didn't tackle well. They didn't put their pads on people, didn't bring them down in space. And then just the overall urgency was not up to the standard. They have to fix all those things. The difference is the Browns don't have the same uh, weapons on the outside that make you do some of the things that Mike Caldwell had to do against the Bengals. There's not a Jamar Chase. There's not a, a T. Higgins and Tyler Board where you have three guys that you worry about being able to play man-to-man. Amari Cooper is a fantastic wide receiver. Elijah Moore is a dangerous wide receiver. But it's different in terms of against Cincinnati, after Jamar Chase had that big play, you had to double team him every time. I don't know if Mike Caldwell will feel the same way facing the Browns. I think the priority is stop the run, make them pass. I don't think going into the game that they wanted Cincinnati to really have to attack through the air. Yeah, when you make Cincinnati pass, you're doing them a favor. I, I don't know that that's true with the Browns. So, uh, again, uh, great point but great point by Bucky. He's, he's consistent. He's on his game is what they call that, JP. Um, <laughs> I, I think this weekend's game is, uh, is a chance for the Jaguars' defense – to really nail down what they've been saying and believing all year, that they're the defining unit on this team. Uh, they believe they're a good run defense. They weren't the other night, but for the most part this year, they believe that's a defining uh, characteristic of this team. They believe they create turnovers. They believe they're good enough to win games. Uh, with with Trevor down or with uh, him limited, et cetera, et cetera, going in on muddy field against a good defense, this is a chance for that defense to show that they are what what they believe they are. They can define, you know, I think if you win this, you make the playoffs. If, if you don't win this, I think it's, you know, I would say a toss-up, but much different. Every week's tight. Um, so I think it's a chance for this uh, for this defense to put their stamp on this season. Not that they haven't already, but it's, it's December now, and the quarterback's down. Uh, if you want to be the unit that this team can hang your hat on, be that on Sunday. Jags fans want customized Jags furniture for your home? Check out ZipChair.com and browse all customizable options. ZipChair furniture for fans. What about the skill guys for the Jags offense? We'll get to that in a moment. It's Huddle Up with Bucky Brooks. Hello, I'm Dan Fields. And we have some great news. Fields has the vehicle you want in stock, priced right, and ready for delivery. Fields Auto Group is Jacksonville's luxury automotive destination for Cadillac, Jaguar, Land Rover, Lexus, Mercedes-Benz, and Porsche. Inventory is back and available for immediate delivery. And every Fields customer can take advantage of our Fields Amenities Program with complimentary loaners, car washes, and our cafes. You deserve the best. Stop by today or go to FieldsAuto.com. Frank Frangie here. When you want barbecue in Jacksonville, you want Bono's Pit Barbecue. You can find Bono's locations all around town and on game day at Everbank Stadium because Bono's is the official barbecue of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Over 70 years of authentic Southern Pit Barbecue, we are the local barbecue joint in bbq for generations of people in Jacksonville. Go to Bono'sBarbecue.com to learn more or call 904-880-8310 today. And remember, if you don't see a pit, it ain't legit. Hey, Florida. This is Luke Fortner, center for the Jacksonville Jaguars. We all know the rush of a good game, but there's no winning with aggressive driving on our roads. It's all about strategy and control. Embrace the space with the driver in front of you. Go the speed limit and use that blinker. These are the moves that make us all champions of the road. Target Zero is our game plan for safer roads and is a testament to our teamwork and dedication. Join me and let's get everyone home safely every single day. Yeah, I mean, the team's always the priority, you know. Um, we had, obviously, the same conversations before the New Orleans game earlier in the season, and um, 
I'll never put myself or the team in a position to where um, we're at a higher risk or we're not going to play our best because I'm not able to do my job. So, you know, that's those are all questions you have to answer throughout the course of the week. And um, just for me, it's just doing everything I can every second of the day to, to get back as soon as possible, you know, whenever that is. So um, that's, yeah, that's the whole thought process behind everything. All eyes on Trevor Lawrence this week. Well, not in the practice field today, but um, moving forward to see if he'll be ready to roll this Sunday. Not ruled out yet. Coming off a high ankle sprain. Welcome back. It's Huddle Up with Bucky Brooks. And all elite wrestling returns home to Jacksonville with an explosive AEW Dynamite and Rampage. See all the action at Daly's Place Wednesday, January 10th. Tickets on sale now. Daly'sPlace.com. A little wrestling, John. Wrestling. Yeah. At Daly's Place. Yeah, coming up in January. Um, Christian Kirk done. So, Parker Washington in. Uh, what did you see from Calvin Ridley last week? Say Jones, the skill guys with some changes again with some of those personnel guys. And, and Evan Ingram had some catches, obviously, and finally got in the end zone, Bucky, last week. Yeah, so uh, this would be interesting because what happened is when you remove Christian Kirk from the field, it takes away – I would say Trevor Lawrence's favorite target in terms of like those money downs, those key situations. He has a synergy and a connection with Christian Kirk. But when you remove him, Evan Ingram goes up in the pecking order. We saw him have a big game and it wasn't a coincidence. When you take Kirk out, he is going to kind of have a more prominent role on the offense. Calvin Ridley continues to be the guy they'll look for. He and Zay Jones for big plays. They can work around some of the things that um, leave when Christian Kirk is off the field, but the unit has to play better. Parker Washington did a good job of limited action, but the thing that showed up to me, and we saw it on the play that Trevor got hurt, now that he's in the game, he has to know exactly what he's doing because they're counting on everybody on the field to know exactly what they're doing so they can get in the right spots so Trevor Lawrence can throw the ball on time. That trust has to be there because the timing is everything. And if he doesn't trust Parker Washington, it puts him in a bad position because then he starts to panic and trying to figure out where to go next in the progression. So this week, number 11 has to get ready to play or the Jaguars have to just put him in on a package with a limited menu so he can know exactly what he do. But he has to know what to do because it's really important that he knows what he's doing. Yeah, my guess is it would be somewhere in the middle there. I mean, I, I, I would think Buck is exactly right. You put him – in, in a package and make sure that he knows everything that he's doing. I also think Zay Jones, uh, it, it, the trust that he has with Trevor, we talked about it so much when Zay was out. Uh, I thought you saw a couple of plays the other night where Trevor clearly trusts that. Uh, and I think Zay Jones becomes a huge factor on third downs and on critical downs because I think the trust that he has with Ingram and with Zay is greater than the trust that he even has with Ridley uh, mm -hmm. and uh, certainly with Parker. So uh, I guess that I guess this is a long-winded way of saying it. Thank goodness Zay's back because I think without that, then you really would be down. Now at least you've got one absolute go-to guy in Ridley and two guys with that chemistry. Um, look, in the NFL – you're supposed to be able to withstand one loss. And mm -hmm. Christian's a big, big loss. I think he, it, with apologies to, J, to Zay, who we talked about all early, early in the season, Christian's the biggest loss for Trevor. That's who he trusts the most. That's the most reliable route runner out of the group. He's the biggest loss. But they've got three good players. You should be able to overcome this as long as Trevor's in the game. Now, overcoming both, yeah, I, that's a tall drink of water. I don't know if that's one of Bucky-isms or not. But it is it, now. It's still a tall drink of water. It'll be a lot. I mean, it, 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 is, it is a tall drink of water. It is a huge issue trying to overcome multiple losses. I think the other thing that didn't come up uh, last week, they didn't have Brent Strange, so they couldn't really go heavy into their 12 personnel packages. What you might see is a little more of Luke Farrell and Evan Ingram on the field together because even though it's 12 personnel, one back, two tight ends, Evan Ingram gives them that flexibility to kind of use him like a wide receiver. You may see more of those combinations where they can create uh, mismatches with the bigs on the field using Evan Ingram as kind of like the focal point. We've seen that in the past. It reminds me of uh, last year when he played against the Tennessee Titans, had a big game. Uh, you might see Evan Ingram become more of a featured player um, 
with Christian Kirk out of the lineup, changed it up a little bit. But Zay Jones also contributed in a bigger way. We'll find out. He's hitting out of the park today. He, yeah. No Buckyisms today, but top end analysis gets it. I hadn't thought about that, but. Uh, Luke Farrell and Brenton Strange, uh, both really good blocking tight ends, and Farrell's an underrated passing tight end. Uh, you could easily see uh, that change. So, kudos to Buck again, three for three. We're back in a moment. <laughs> Final thoughts to wrap up the program ahead of week 14. The Jaguars and the Cleveland Browns coming up this Sunday at 1 o'clock. And this is Huddle Up with Bucky Brooks. Hello, I'm Dan Fields, and we have some great news. Fields has the vehicle you want in stock, priced right, and ready for delivery. Fields Auto Group is Jacksonville's luxury automotive destination for Cadillac, Jaguar, Land Rover, Lexus, Mercedes-Benz, and Porsche. Inventory is back and available for immediate delivery. And every Fields customer can take advantage of our Fields Amenities Program with complimentary loaners, car washes, and our cafes. You deserve the best. Stop by today or go to fieldsauto.com. Are you ready to elevate your tailgate experience, Jaguars fans? Citrus Distillers, a proud partner of the Jacksonville Jaguars, is excited to announce the 2023 Jaguars Limited Edition Whiskey Bottle. Now available at Total Wine and other participating retailers. Elevate your tailgate experience, Jaguars fans. The 2023 Jaguars Limited Edition Whiskey Bottle. Duval! As the official ticket marketplace of the Jacksonville Jaguars and the NFL, Ticketmaster has a wide selection of tickets available for every game. Whether you're cheering on the Jaguars at home or away, Ticketmaster has you covered. With Ticketmaster's interactive seat map, you'll get a 360-degree preview of your seat so you can make sure you've got the best view of those pivotal plays. Plus, the Ticketmaster app makes it easy to sell or transfer tickets if your plans change. And mobile tickets make getting in on game day a breeze. Find tickets today at Ticketmaster.com slash Jaguars. That's Ticketmaster.com slash Slash Jaguars. You know, obviously, yeah, you were, you were. We have an amazing medical staff um, that takes care of us, and in every way that you could imagine, anything that we need, they're always there. They they work pretty much around the clock to to take care of us. So we got one of if not the best in the league so there's no I mean I've heard what Amanda was telling me kind of all the stuff that's been going on and yeah I didn't we talked about getting a cart and I was going to get a cart and then I'm standing there and you know I'm, I'm already on the sideline at that point the tunnel's right there I just wanted to get off the field get out of there I didn't know what was going on with my ankle and I felt like I could get off I was like hey you're good just don't bring it out I'm going in and then once I got in there I'm like this is a pretty long walk, you know, but I, I was already there and they asked again if I wanted a cart. I'm like, no, we're going to make it the whole way there. I didn't know there was cameras in the tunnel, you know, so that's kind of there everywhere. Exactly. So, uh, but no, it's, of course we have carts and we have everything we need. And I was the one that, that didn't choose to, to take one, you know, so I guess put that on me. Maybe that was dumb. Maybe I should have taken one, whatever. But um, it's nothing to do with us not having a card available. I don't think that would that would happen in the National Football League, especially here with the with the crew that we have. So that's the quarterback, of course, Trevor Lawrence today. Huddle up with Bucky Brooks brought to you by Fields Auto Group Jacksonville. Step up to luxury, FieldsAuto.com. Bucky's guy, Colin Cowherd. Yeah, it's Bucky's blasting guy. the Jaguars today for not having a card available for the quarterback, and that's the response, Buck. So there you go. Yeah. Look, man, I had it. I had it a lot. I I, I was on NFL radio, uh, late hits with uh, Andrew Siciliano and Max Stars, and I'm having to explain to them that there are two tunnels. He elected to go to the tunnel that was closest to where the injury was, and there was a cart that was racing to come get him, but he elected to walk up in the tunnel before the car could get there. Like there are tunnels available, they were going to make him like limp all the way into the locker room. Some of that was him doing the John Wayne thing kind of cowboying his way up into the tunnel showing his toughness. Well, I, I, think, I think that's a league-wide trait. I, I think most players, it's tough to get uh, NFL players to walk to leave the field on a cart if, if they have another option. So, um, yep. you know, I think there is an, an element of that. So uh, <laughs> yeah. it's the NFL and the social media age. Silly. This is what you get. It's silly, is what it is. That's uh, no doubt about that. So now the Jaguars and the Cleveland Browns 
quarterback watch this week. We'll see what Trevor Lawrence does, if anything, leading into the weekend. Could be a game-time decision again, coming off the high ankle sprain. C.J. Beathard would be the backup that would go in his place, but Trevor has not missed a start in his career. And it's uh, obviously, if we, as we talked about, a big ball game in the AFC South race and the AFC playoff race as a whole. And uh, the Browns are right there in at 7-5. and five. The Jaguars, of course, at 8-4. and four. They are the number four seed currently. The Browns at number six. So uh, huge all the way around this game uh, this Sunday, John. Bucky's turned me. I uh, Every time I felt, after he made his point about the resilience of this team, every time this year I felt sort of bad going in about a game. Uh, they've approved me wrong. And I felt bad all week. Uh, I felt like, boy, this is a tough Browns matchup. But, uh, Bucky, you turned me. I, I, the defining trait of this team, which I used that phrase earlier, has been their ability to play well when people think they're not going to. So I'm not going to lock it. I think you've already locked it. But I, uh, no matter who plays quarterback, I, I think it's dangerous not to believe in this team in this situation. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm glad I was so influential. I'm glad I was persuasive well, and stuff. My, uh, you're a big yeah, influence my, on me, Bucky. Yeah, my 10th grade English teacher, Ms. Watson, would appreciate that, that some of the lessons that we learned during debates, it, it, it kind of worked. Um, but I, look, here, here's the thing. Like, we have to call the team what it is after, what, what, what 12, 13 games. The, the identity has been there. And the identity has been when this team has been back into a corner, they play well. For whatever reason, they haven't played well at home. And so this game is on the road. We've seen them play well on the road. They're playing against a team that also has a backup quarterback or uh, a young quarterback in DTR playing. They will play much better. The pride will make the defense, it'll force the defense to play better because they were embarrassed by the performance that Jake Browning would have over 300 yards, complete almost 90% of his passes in those things. You'll get a much better performance from the team. Now it's just about doing the little things, taking care of the ball, eliminating the pre-snap penalties, and then not giving up the big plays. They do those things, they'll win the game, and I expect them to fully do it on Sunday. There you have it. That'll do it for our program today. Bucky Brooks, have a great week, and we'll talk to you on Sunday in uh, rainy Cleveland. 80% chance and temperatures in the low 50s, so bundle up and stay dry, Buck. Uh, I was not hoping for the rainy uh, forecast. Maybe it'll change. Got a couple of days. Maybe it'll change. It's Cleveland. If it changes, it might only get worse. You know where it's not going to be <laughs> raining, Buck? Press box. Oh, I know. I studio. know. Oh, oh, John. <laughs> Drive the studio. That's Bucky Brooks and John Osher. Thanks to our entire crew. David Cho, Brent Reber, Joe Fortunato. And thanks to you for watching. It's Huddle Up with Bucky Brooks.